pray. Praise God. Father God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, Father God, that you are God and God alone and that there is no one above you and there is nothing that you can't do and won't do for your people. For you said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give unto his? So we know, Lord God, that you have blessed us and will continue to bless us and give us all that is necessary pertaining to life in you. We thank you, Father God, that you're a good father, that you keep good records, that you remember us when we don't remember ourselves and that you care for us when we don't care for ourselves. We know, Father God, that you, Lord God, hallelujah, sit high and look low. Your word said the eyes of the Lord go to and fro across this whole earth to show yourself strong on the behalf of those whose heart are perfect towards you. So we thank you, Father God, for what you're about to do in this study. Use me, Lord God. Let nothing enter into my mind or come out of my mouth that is not of you. For we, your people, desire to hear a word from you and not from men. So we thank you for meeting our need on this night. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I, Helen, you're not muted. Um, I'm not? No, oh. ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to help teach, you can. <laughs> God. <laughs> I thought you might have wanted to sing a selection or something. <laughs> so anyway, I remember we were going to um, Gospel Tabernacle was going to uh, uh, Bishop Dove's church over at the Atlantic Mills. Um, the uh, the um, uh, what were they called? Um, the uh, it was Sister Esther, um, Deaconess Diane Dean, and also uh, Elder the, Fran. The, um, evangelicals. the Evangelicals. Yeah, the Evangelical Singers, yes. So um, I remember we had met in a lot, and uh, we prayed, and um, uh, uh, they were doing a selection, and we were all there. Bishop was there. Pastor Mal was there. We were all there, you know, the early church. Um, and... Um, I remember praying and asking God for patience. And I remember clear as day that uh, um, uh, 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 evangelist Esther Armstrong said, you better be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. <laughs> and I thought about that this week when I was going through my trial um, at work and I'm um, uh, it was a tough one, but I had a chance to sit back and realize what the word of God says when it says, be still and know that I am God. Amen? And what was coming at me was so heavy that all I can hear was, be still and know that I am God. So I thank and praise God that he continues to perform his word. I mean, I mean, he held me. He held me. I mean, he held me, you know. Um, when I wanted to say something, I couldn't. Because all I can hear was his word reverberating. Be still and know that I am God. Praise God. So I thank and praise God for patience. I thank and praise God that um, I'm, I'm learning to uh, allow God and the spirit of God to take me over when I would have taken me over and made a mess of everything. Um, I thank and praise God for patience. Amen. But uh, we're going to go, we're going to start off. Amen. As usual, you know, I always start off with the theme. Amen. Jeremiah 1, 9 and 10. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1, uh, verses 9 and 10. When you find it, say amen. Give me a thumbs up. Wave. Amen.
Amen. Jeremiah 1, 9 and 10. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said unto me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Amen. Um, I just want to touch briefly on the topic at hand, which is the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I'm not going to stay there, but I thank God that we are in a place where we're no longer just going to stand for anything. Amen. Um, after 400 years plus, finally, Black Lives Matter is not just a slogan, but a movement now. Um, and I know that all lives matter. I would never say it wouldn't matter. Amen. But it's not that the Blacks are the only ones on earth. But if we as a nation don't realize that we are all created in the image and likeness of God, that we won't see each other as vital and important and will continue to do what has been done for years. The fact that we were all created equal has been distorted and somehow people have been taught that some others are superior and we are inferior, <laughs> to say the least, is ridiculous. God alone is superior, amen? Everything and everyone else is inferior. There is nothing nor no one like our God, amen? He alone is a strong tower. In him, we can run to for our defense. Amen? So I'm going to talk this evening to you about prayer as a defense. Amen? Prayer as a defense. Um, but I, before I get into it, I just want to ask a question. Um, how do you personally deal with your emotions with the mistreatment of others how do you personally deal with your emotions with the mistreatment of others i i can't hear you can you hear me i can hear you yes okay so so if I am in a situation where I can see something in the person who I feel is being offensive to another person, I actually intervene and speak up. Um, so I understand that I should pray about it, but I, I, I just have to say something. Um, and I'm not sure if that's wrong. Maybe I should stop and think about it and hope that someone else will intervene, but in most cases, people don't. Amen. Anybody else? Sister Carissa. I usually speak up on um, people's behalf if I feel as though they're being mistreated. Um, it has been actually where if I spoke up on somebody else's behalf, that you know, ended up causing an argument, but I've learned that later, um, as I go further in my walk with Christ, that my prayer changes. So in that respect, when I do speak up now, it's a different, um, tone. It's a different way of speaking because I ask God to, um, help me with my tongue. So I may be asking him to help me with my tongue in, situ in a specific situation, but he changes my speech throughout my, uh, whoever I come encounter with. So I just want to mention one time when I did intervene and I don't know, I don't even know what the, the situation ended up happening. Um, there were, I was sitting on my porch and 
these kids were fighting. They, they came down the street fighting and it, it was a whole gang of them on this one person. And I just got off the porch and I went out and said, no, 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 you need to stop. You're ganging up on this one person. You wanna fight one to one? Okay, go for it. But you cannot gang up on this one boy. And later when I thought about it, I said, oh, how stupid. You know, they could have turned around and beat me up. <laughs> but, you know, that's just one case. But since I've learned um, that, that I can't intervene in everything, but in this situation, I couldn't help it. I really couldn't help it. Amen. Anyone else? Elder Fran? I think, I think um, sometimes just making noise, it depends on the situation. I mean, if it's something we're seeing on television, then dealing with our personal emotions, um, that's separate. What, what Sister Rochelle is talking about, so that, that was hands-on. She was right there. She was in that particular moment. And sometimes Sister Rochelle making any kind of noise distracts the enemy. So um, whether you went down the stairs or said something to them, personally, one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes just yelling out, stop it kind of like it just distracts and makes makes them come to uh, reality when sometimes they could have been caught up in the moment themselves mm -hmm. of peer pressure mm -hmm. and they see, you know, someone else, a woman, and probably, I'm not sure if you were considered to be an older woman from the kids that were there, but just that, uh, that respect for you could have caused uh, a, a reaction of them to stop, not necessarily retaliate against you. Right. So I think I probably would have done the same thing. If I saw it in front of me, I probably would have yelled out and say, hey, what is, what's going on? Stop it. I probably would have said that because it distracts their attention from what they're doing and distract the enemy. But when I see something that's on television and I'm not right in there, and as you, the question is, how do you deal with your emotions when you see some, somebody else being um, uh, hurt? I don't know if you mean is if I see it on television, I I really I have to pray within myself. I have to pray for peace because I can't handle I can't change that situation because it's out of my hands. Um, and, and I just pray that there are people that are close within that area that will protest, complain, do something. You, you're hoping that God will use somebody else that is in that immediate area because if I'm seeing it, other people have seen it and that immediate eerie to take on that fight um, that is closer to them. So it's uh, two different things to me. I don't know. This I, to in your question, I don't know what direction you wanted us to, if uh, no, that, our emotions. No, that's good. Mr. Camille, did you have your hand up? Okay. Um, so I would say, probably like Sister Rochelle and, and Elder Fran, I, also tend to intervene um if sometimes you know wisely sometimes in the moment uh, many times i it's it's more like after then i channel my emotions towards some kind of action so if there's something that i can do with my students or if it's something that i can raise awareness about then i'll i'll do it in that way but i try to to uh, ask god where what would you want me to do because i do think that it's god's work to intervene i like all throughout the Bible, the Old Testament, New Testament, everywhere, God tells us that we need to seek justice and we need to stand up for the widowless, he calls them. He, you know, stand up for the foreigners and he stood up for the woman who was going to be stoned for adultery. Like he, like he is all about standing up and intervening. So I, I, it, it, I pray and ask God, like, how, how can I channel my anger or my sadness or my outrage so that I can stand up? I'm, I'm, I'm intervene. Amen. Amen. I ask that question because um, <clears throat> seeing the injustice being done hurts. Amen. It hurts. And I don't, I can't say that I've never intervene because anytime I see anything happening in front of me, I always intervene. You know, um, if there was a fight, I'm breaking it up. You know what I mean? I'm not going to watch and say, ooh, no, nah, that's not going to happen. You know, no, no, get off. Okay, that's enough. You know, stop it. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, it takes a strong person to seek justice because some people want to do something, 
but they feel if I get in, you know, then something may happen to me. Amen. And I like what you said, Camille, about, you know, God stepping in as a defense because prayer as a defense, amen, works. Prayer as a defense works. Amen. Um, so we're going to be coming from the book of Psalms, Psalm 62. Psalm 62, verses 1 through 8, and also verse 11. Psalm 62, verses 1 through 8, and also 11. Because sometimes we feel like we're not being defended or that no one cares or that no one hears or that no one's listening. Amen. And a lot of times people are listening, but they're waiting to see when to intervene. Amen. But God is always intervening. Amen. Psalm 62, you have it, amen, starting at verse 1, let me get my glasses out, <laughs> amen, and it reads, truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Amen. And I just want to stop there because when he said he only is my rock and my salvation, he is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved meaning I shall not be shaken, amen? And sometimes when we see things, it, it rocks us to the core and we don't know how to act or react. We just know that we need to do something, amen? We know that we need to do something because it's indwelled within us, within our spirit, man, to defend, amen? I don't care if it's, a, if it's a child, if it's a dog. Hey, don't treat that dog like that. We're, we're going to say something to someone because emotionally we know it's not right. Amen? Um, I, I mean, I, I've seen times where people were, you know, I, 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 was, I, I remember a time I was out and um, I seen a guy, he was, uh, 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 you, know, you know, mistreating his girlfriend. Um, and I said, oh, man, I'll be hitting her like that, man. You know, it's still be hitting on no girls like that, man. If they're going to hit somebody, hit a man like that. You know, he said, mind your business. I said, she is my business. You know, because emotionally, I had to get involved. Amen. And I thank and praise God for this Black Lives Matter movement right now. I thank and praise God that, you know, it's not just Black people that are getting involved. It's white people. It's Hispanic. It's Chinese. It's Russian. It's Korean. It's, it's, it's Japanese. It's everyone is saying enough is enough. Amen? And that's how we should feel. We should feel as though that even if we can't get to a place, we can use prayer as a defense. Amen? We can use prayer as a defense. Prayer works. Prayer works. We know that prayer works. We, we, it's a proven fact. We've prayed and seen prayer work. Amen? So we have to get into a place of prayer. We have, I mean, the Bible says men ought always to pray and think not. Don't give up just because we don't see it happening. Don't give up. Continue to pray. Use prayer as a defense. Amen? If you can give monetarily to a cause, give monetarily to a cause. If you can speak at a cause, speak at a cause. But prayer as a defense will work. I know for a fact it can. Amen? It's worked for me. It's worked for countless others. Amen? I remember i um, uh, I was, uh, I was walking home one night, it was dark, and I'm telling you, you know, the Bible says, be not afraid of sudden fear, but sometimes when you hear noises in the dark and nobody's there, <laughs> boy, <laughs> I don't care how tired you are, your walk gets a little bit faster. <laughs> And 
I said, Lord, I said, Lord, just keep me safe. Amen. I said, Lord, just keep keep me safe, Lord. I said, I don't know what that is, but Lord, you keep me safe. You said, Lord God, that, that your angels and can't run about me. Amen. Keep me safe, Lord. Amen. And, 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 and prayer, prayer as a defense works. I'm telling you. I mean, I've, I've used it. I've tried it. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man that puts his trust in him. I'm telling you, when you trust God, amen, to a point where you know that he's the only one that can deal with this situation, amen, prayer becomes defense for you, amen, because God says, okay, my son, he, he, my daughter, yeah, they, 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 they trust that I'm going to take care of them. Amen? Praise God. Verse 3 says, how long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Amen. And um, uh, I don't even like, I don't even know why God gave me this uh, this morning. Um, but um, he was saying, you know, that we should pray for those that are in leadership. Amen. We should pray for those that are in leadership. Amen. It doesn't matter if what they're doing is right in your eyes. It's not up to you to say who's right or who's wrong. Amen. But it's up to us to pray for them. Amen. Because how can we bless God and curse man? Amen. The Bible says that ought not be. Amen. So we have to pray for those that are in leadership. We have to pray for our president. We have to pray for our vice president. We have to pray for our governors. We have to pray for our councilmen. We have to pray for those that are above us. Amen. That God would get, God would touch their heart and they would hear. Amen. It's up to us to do that. We need to use prayer as a defense and not complaining, not murmuring, not slandering. Amen. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, of us who wish that things on our job would go better. Amen. That people would see us for who we really are and not who they try to portray us to be. Amen. But it's not going to change anything if we're complaining. Amen. Our defense needs to be in prayer. Our defense needs is to pray for them. Amen. The Bible says pray for them who despise, who wickedly despise you. Pray for them. Pray, pray for them. Amen. Because prayer works. Prayer changes things. I remember at a job I was at, um, this one lady. She was jealous of me, and um, I knew it. And she said, oh, I'm going to get you fired. I'm going to get you fired. I'm going to get you fired. I said, first off, you can't get me fired. I said, because you didn't hire me. I said, but rest assured, if I do get fired, God allowed it, and he has something better for me. Amen? So, 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 so your threats, I'm not going to run in a cave like the prophet did. Amen. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to confront you and let you know that you can't do anything that God will not allow. Amen. And I'm going to pray for you. And I mean it. I'm going to pray for you. I, I, I really am going to pray for you. I don't need you to pray for me. I said, that's all the more reason why I'm going to pray for you. Amen. Because you don't even realize that you need prayer. Amen. And some people don't realize it. They don't, they don't see the state that they're in. They don't see the bitterness that they're in. They know that they need something, but prayer is the last thing they feel as though they need. Amen? In verse 5, says, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Amen? And sometimes I'm telling you, people will make you want to run from the very place that God brought you. But don't do it. Amen? Don't do it. He only is my rock 
in my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. I shall not be shaken. I shall not be afraid. Amen? I don't have to fear anything or anyone. Only person that I'm going to fear, which is reverence, is God. Amen? Him alone. Amen? He is my defense. Amen? When I feel threatened, I know who to go to. When I feel worried, I know who to go to. When I feel uneasy, I know who to go to. Because I use prayer as a defense. It's a defense mechanism. Amen? I'm not going to run. I'm not going to hide. I'm going to go straight to God. A lot of us, we get in situations and we run from God instead of running to God. Amen? I look to the hills from what's come at my help. Amen? My help alone comes from God, who made the heavens and the earth. Amen? I don't have to worry about what man can do to me. Amen? As long as I know that God is on my side, amen? As long as I know I'm walking upright before man and upright before God, I don't have to worry about anything. You can say what you want to say. You can do what you want to do, but God will have the final say, amen? Because prayer, I use prayer as a defense. That's my defense mechanism, amen? I don't need a gun. I don't need a bat. I don't need a knife. All I need is prayer. My God, my God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Prayer as a defense. Amen? Prayer as a defense. Prayer when you get a bad word from the doctor. Prayer when you get a bad word from, the, from a lawyer. Prayer when you get a bad word from your friend. Prayer when you get a bad word from your coworker. Prayer when you get a bad word from, the, from your boss. Amen? Prayer when you get a bad word from your, your kids. Amen? Prayer as a defense will change things. Amen? It'll change things. It said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. The newness is in prayer. Hallelujah. The newness is in prayer. The newness is no longer dependent upon yourself to get you out of situations, but depending on God to get you out of the situation. Amen? That's how you do it. You pray your way out of a situation. You pray your way out of a situation. Don't never stop praying. I'm telling you, prayer will keep you. Prayer will keep you. Prayer will keep you in a steady mindset. Amen? Because when you're praying and you're talking to God and you're telling God all that's going on, but then you sit up there and you reverence him and you say, but Lord, I know what you can do. I see my situation, Lord, but I know what you can do. I know how you brought me out the last time. I know how you healed me the last time. I know how you strengthened me the last time. I know how you paid my bills the last time. I know how you brought me out of this mess the last time, Lord. And I know if you did it before, you'll do it again. Amen? Prayer will change things in your life, but we have to use it as a defense mechanism. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 7 says, in God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Huh? <laughs> in God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Hallelujah. See, see when we get weak, we, 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 we don't go where we're supposed to go. And we don't say what we're supposed to say. We say the total opposite because we allow the frustrations of the world to take us over. But our refuge, our rock, our salvation is in God. Glory to God. He's the one that's going to give us what we need. He's the one that's going to comfort us. He's the one that's going to strengthen us. He's the one that's going to let us know that everything's going to be all right. I got you. I got this. Don't you worry about it. I thank you that you came to me and you didn't go to someone else first. <laughs> he said, early in the morning will I rise, will I seek thy face, O Lord. Amen? Early in the morning, early, early, before, before I even get started, I need to see you, God. Because this thing, boy, this thing wore me out last night. And I tried to pray my way through it, God, but it just seemed like I couldn't get no sleep. But I'll tell you what, before my feet hit the floor, Lord, 
I'm going to seek your face. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to seek your face. I'm going to turn to you. I'm going to run to you, Lord, because that's where my refuge is. That's where my strength is. That's where my help comes from. My help comes from you, Lord. <laughs> Verse 8 says, trust in him at all times. Ye people, pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. Amen? God is a refuge for us with, with all that's going on emotionally. Watching all these different videos, people being choked, girls being slammed on the ground and being choked, old men being pushed to the ground. No regard for life. God says, listen, Speak your voice, but come to me because I am your refuge. Glory to God. I'm your refuge. I'm going to give you the shelter that you need. Pour out your heart before him. Amen? Pour out your heart before God. Tell God what's on your mind. Tell God how you feel about this thing. Tell God you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen? As far back as I can remember, there's always been racial discrimination. From Martin Luther King to Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, all the way through the riots in Watts, Rodney King, Eric Garner, you name it, people being senselessly murdered. And instead of doing what God called us to do, which is pour out our heart, we complain. But there's a new way of doing things, a new way that was old. It's called prayer. It's called prayer. The Bible says, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Amen? The Bible tells us that one will chase a thousand and two will send 10,000 to flight. Just imagine 50 people praying in unison for the same thing. Just imagine 500 people praying in unison for the same thing. Amen? Prayer as a defense will work. Amen? Prayer as a defense for work. God, God, God says his ear is open and attentive to your prayers. God hears and answers prayer. That's his word. He hears and answers prayer. Amen? So, so all we have to do is pour our heart out to him. And let them know how frustrated we are. Let them know that we're tired of seeing the same thing happening over and over and over again. And verse 11 says, and I love this. God had spoken once. Twice have I heard this. That power belonging unto God. Amen? I remember someone, I don't know who it was, I think it might have been um, uh, 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 might have been Jake's or uh, Noel Jones said, when God speaks, it's like a reverberation. You know when you throw a rock in the water and you see the ripple effect? When God speaks, and it's like it reverberating all the way through. It says once, has he spoken, but twice have I heard it, you know? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I never left, I never left, I never left, I never left. I'll be with you until the end, I'll be with you until the end, I'll be with you until the end, amen? God has heard your prayers, and he's spoken back to you, amen? Sometimes it's saying, peace be still, amen? But if we're still talking, we're not going to be able to hear what God is saying. 
Say what we have to say and then wait on God. Amen? Say what we have to say, then wait on God. He said in his word, those that wait on God, they shall renew their strength. Amen? We feel weak at points, but we're going to moan up with wings as eagles. Amen? We're going to get to a place where we can walk and not be weary, run and faint not. But we have to speak our heart to God and let God know how we feel about the situations. Let God know how we feel about what's going on. With so much going on in our lives today, with this pandemic, the social distancing, the Black Lives Matter movement, the upcoming election, our jobs, our families, our friendships have been likely forever changed by the slight trickery of the devil. Amen? And I was talking to one of my uh, clients today, a uh, Catholic man. So uh, he said, I, he said, I got a feeling that you're, you're one of my Christian brothers, aren't you? I said, yes, I am, Christian. Yes, I am. He said, I had a feeling. He said, there's something about you, just your whole demeanor. I said, yeah. So we talked a little bit about what's going on. And I told him, I said, you want to know the greatest trick ever? I said, this is the first time that I can remember in my short life here on this earth that we never got to celebrate the Passover. We never got a chance to celebrate Palm Sunday. We never got a chance to celebrate Easter Sunday, and we didn't get a chance to celebrate Mother's Day. There was no stores open. Things were closed down. And people were secluded during the holiest of times. We were separated. When the Bible says that we should have come together. Amen. And I thought about that. I said, the devil is a liar. I said, he, it was a great trick. And he said, yeah, this is the time of the Antichrist. I said, yeah, this is the, I said, this is the, this is this part right here that we just went through was the forerunning. Like John was the forerunner for Christ. This was the forerunning of the separation of keeping people away from church and away from each other. Amen. And I said, don't be fooled. We've said it before. Jesus is coming back. And they said, yeah, yeah, he's coming back. I said, yeah, but now he's a lot closer than he was before. I said, because we never seen anything like this before. Where you're making people stay in the house. Curfews. Yeah. Prayer as a defense, I'm telling you, will work if you use it the way you're supposed to use it. Amen? If we do what the Bible tells us and we pray, it'll work. We just have to believe that it'll work. Amen? In one month, the month of March 2020, a month and a year that will go down in the history books. Our lives have forever been changed. I have a question. How has this quarantine affected your lives? How has this quarantine affected your lives? Sister Carissa and then Pastor Pelham. 
Um, I found that during the quarantine, um, life as I knew it, you know, get up for work, get the children ready for school, everybody disperse and then come back at the end of the day, um, changed dramatically all in a day. Um, I had to learn how to manage having my children at home 24 seven. That was uh, really difficult. Um, and then I had to learn new ways of doing my job. Um, so that was proven difficult when there's no answers um, and you have to kind of figure it out as you go, it, it becomes really difficult um, for life. Pastor Pelham. <clears throat> yeah, um, as for me, it's uh, more, um, you know, it's, it's, it's on the spiritual side of things. Um, you know, uh, the difficult thing about it for me is, is fellowship. I'm, I'm, I'm so used to being in a fellowship and, and with brothers and sisters in Christ. And um, so um, I think that that's what try, I would say that that's where I have the hardest. <laughs> you know, that's 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 where it becomes somewhat kind of difficult. Uh, you know, um, for me, um, is not being able to be uh, in that fellowship, joined together as a body of Christ. You know, uh, within the within a church service and just the fellowship, man, being around one another. You know. Social distancing is really, uh, you know, really kind of um, put somewhat of a toll on me somewhat, but, you know, uh, you know, God encourages me each day, you know, he gives me strength and, and I praise God for this here, you know, what we have here, you know, the, uh, the Zoom, because, I mean, just imagine if we didn't have this here, you know, um, and, you know, thinking upon that also, I, you know, I was thinking about something while you was talking and uh, how it affected us. And uh, there was something else you said, I can't really uh, put, put a nail on the head, you know, but, um, you know, even with this here, uh, coronavirus and stuff, I think of it sometimes, you know, how, how <laughs> the word of God says uh, that all things uh, come together for our good, you know, uh, because I, I believe that we ended up in areas now that we want to have ended up in if the coronavirus didn't come in, all right? I mean, now we're, we're reaching more uh, people than we could actually reach just by uh, having a church service, you know, within doors. I mean, now uh, you, you have things where churches are doing a lot of live streaming. And I'm thinking about, you know, in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 24, when it talks about the gospel being preached, you know, in the whole world. You know, uh, so we're in a time now that I think that, you know, I believe that even in this here time that we're in, with this coronavirus, social distancing, uh, it's still working together for our good. You know, uh, we're, we're, we're out there where, you know, uh, we're traveling avenues that we weren't traveling before, you know, and, and there's people that are being reached, okay? that might have never even stepped foot in a church, okay? But you know what? God had a plan and he has a purpose, you know? And uh, I believe that he's always operating. He's always moving by his spirit on our behalf, you know? So I don't look at this here, uh, coronavirus and the separation as a total loss. Um, but I, I look at it as, um, you know, uh, uh, another um, opportunity for us to uh, reach out further than uh, we might have, we, we may, we, we might have not had had if, if we didn't have that coming in as far as the coronavirus. I just wanted to say that, you know, um, so it has its highs and it has its lows, all right? But uh, God is good in everything, amen? Amen. Deacon Lee, I have a response. Um, I think at the beginning, it was uh, really overwhelming for me because of all of the change. So it was change, you know, in my personal life, having the kids, like Sister Carissa said, having the kids at home, um, then both Andy and I working from home, 
than um, having all of my staff working from home, but still some of us had to go in. Then our church is doing everything online, but still some of us had to go in. So it was overwhelming. And then um, a sister spoke into my life and she said, you know, in this time of isolation, God can give you revelation. And I really took that to heart. And I, when I prayed, I said, God, teach me how to align with that because I know that's true. I know that's for me. And, you know, when even now you see, not even from a spiritual perspective, people have started businesses from this pandemic when they had never thought they would. People have learned how to color, draw. I bought some clothes online from a girl who said, listen, I'm going to figure out something and she's talented. So I think, you know, what the, the enemy and God knew it was going to happen, right? But what the enemy meant for evil, God does turn it around for our good. Mm -hmm. And I do see the good in it um, uh, for all of the things that I have learned through this process, even on how to separate, you know, how to delineate work from home, from church, really hard. It's a process. Um, but I truly thank God for it because I know it's, he does it for a reason and it's to bless other people eventually. Um, and that's, that's the way I see it. And I thank him for that. So I see the good in it. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. So I um I I pose that question because um I like the answers. Um there within us is a gift that we've been sitting on. And a lot of us uh complain that we didn't have enough time. Amen. Um we was always at work. Then straight from work to church, I didn't have a chance to cook dinner. You know what I mean? And I found out that those that were multitasking in that way had the time to be able to do the very thing that they said they didn't have time for. Amen? And in ways, it's good. But yeah, I know, okay, you know, when you're around somebody so much, yeah, they might get on your nerves, you know, ain't you got somewhere to go? And can't you go to your friend's house? No, it's not about that. It's about getting to know each other, slowing down for a second. Amen? We were spinning out of control. And I think it was a good thing that we had a chance to slow down. Amen? I think it was a good thing that we had a chance to slow down. I think it was a good thing that we had a chance to to come home and, and stay in the house and say, oh yeah, I meant to paint that wall. <laughs> Amen. I, I ain't gotta get I ain't stuck in traffic no more. I'm working from home. So I can go ahead and, and I can I can do these little to-do lists. Amen. Because I'm I'm not here, there, and everywhere. Amen. So, you know, I say that I ask that reason. That question is if you turn with me to John 10 and 10 we'll get a better understanding of why at this particular moment in time, it was so vital to the enemy to utilize this. John 10 and 10. You find it, say amen. 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 But matter of fact, let's go up to verse 8. Let's read 8 through 10. Jesus said, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. 
I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So he was trying to separate us from the beginning. Amen? Started a while ago in the church. People not talking to each other. People not speaking to each other. So glad you're here. You're walking around the church. You're not wanting to hug this person or that person. You're, boy, you're beelining around the other way because you've seen them coming this way. So you turn around and go around so you don't have to give the so glad you're here hug. You know? My God. So he had already started it. Amen? And when we exposed him for who he was and we brought the love back in there, he said, I know how to do this. Let's get this little pandemic thing out here now and separate them. And now they'll be saying, oh, they supposed to love me, but I ain't heard from them. It's been two months. Ain't nobody called me. The deacons ain't called me. The evangelists ain't called me. The elders ain't called me. Pastor only called me one time. Girl, he called you. He ain't called me. See, because the thief cometh not but to steal. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your happiness. He wants to steal your camaraderie. Amen? And it does. I agree with you, Pastor. It hurts not being around people. Amen? It does. It hurts not being around people. You know? But I told somebody, I said, you know something? I said, this is the trick of the enemy. Right? Check this out. They closed down churches, but never closed liquor stores. Let that sink in. See? Because spirits are real. Do you understand? They even have it, such and such, wine and spirits. Amen? They closed down the churches, but never closed the liquor stores to the point where they started the Grubhub and said, we'll even allow you to get six packs delivered to your house. <laughs> yeah, we'll open up the restaurant, but we're going to put some liquor in there for you. Go ahead. Don't worry about nothing. Yeah. But verse 9 says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in. Amen? If any man enter in. If. See, <laughs> the door is open for you. Amen? It's your choice whether or not you're going to go in or not. Amen? And the only way that you're going to go in is if your heart is right. Your heart has to be right. We have to remember that prayer is a defense. Amen? If we're going to pour our heart out to God, amen, he's saying, I'm right here. Come to me. Just pour out your heart to me. Stop trying to do things on your own. Yeah, I know you're secluded. Yeah, I know nobody's there. Yeah, I know you're by yourself. But you're not alone. I have never left you, nor forsaken you. I'm with you even until the end. You may not see a physical person, but I am here with you. <laughs> Glory to God. Call out to me. Call out to me. That's why I'm here. Call out to me. Like you did before, call out to me and I'll hear you and I'll answer your prayer. You see, if we don't pray, P-R-A-Y, we'll become pray. P-R-E-Y. First Peter 5, 8.
Amen. If we don't pray, we'll become prey. First Peter 5 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, not will devour, may devour. Amen? And if we don't pray, will become prey because he's out there walking about seeking whom he can devour. So we have to stay in the spirit of prayer. We have to stay in the spirit. We have to stay in constant communication with God because God is going to show us some things. God's going to tell us, don't take that left, turn right. Or God's going to say, stop, don't move. God's going to say, turn around. Don't go that way. Amen? God is going to say, stop talking. Don't say another word. Amen? But if we're not in communication with God, we're not going to be able to get the direction that we need. The Bible says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet, and it's a light unto my path. The guidance and the direction that we need is from God. But if we're not praying, we're not going to be able to get it. Amen? It's time that we get it. It's time that we use prayer as a defense. It's not a man. It's not a woman. It's not your boss. It's not your coworkers. It's not your mother nor your mother-in-law. Well, some mother-in-laws, but. It's not our president nor his staff. It's a spirit. I'll repeat that again. It's a spirit. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Sometimes we, we get caught up in our emotions and we don't know how to channel them. Amen? And we say things spur of the moment only to have to apologize and say, I didn't mean to say that, when actually you did mean to say it because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen? but we have to know what spirit is trying to overtake us. That's why we need to stay prayed up. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And sometimes we allow ourselves to get caught up. But first Peter said, be sober, be vigilant. We have to be alert when things are happening right before us. We have to know how to handle things. Amen? Because if not, we're going to get caught up in our witness and everything that we try to build before people in man. Our character can be diminished in the blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye. And they say, and you call yourself a Christian because you weren't alert, because you weren't vigilant, 
because you weren't strong in the power of the Lord and in his might. We allowed ourselves to get emotionally involved into something when we needed to allow prayer to be our defense. Amen? We know what the Bible says. The Bible says the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen? These same Philistines that you see today, you will see them no more. Why? Because our trust is no longer in us, our trust is in God. Amen? God will handle it. It may seem like God done brought them all the way to the door. They're about to kick the door in. But all of a sudden, all is quiet and all is well. God is never late. He's always on time. As long as we keep our emotions in check, as long as we're sober, as long as we're vigilant, as long as we're prayed up, as long as we put God before our emotions, he'll be able to defend us. God is our defense. God is our defense. Amen? And we're going to use God as our defense because we're going to pray to him and we're going to ask him to change the situations that surround us. Hallelujah. We cannot get so caught up in the people in the movement that we forget to do what is so vitally important to our safety and that's to put on the whole arm of God. If we put on the whole armor of God, we'll see things change. Amen? For the Bible says man looks at the outward appearance, but God sees the heart. Amen? We're looking at the outward appearance, but we're not seeing spiritually what God's doing behind the scenes. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Through 18. Ephesians 6, 13 through 18 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen? So, so it, it, if, it, if, we're, if we're preparing ourselves for the battle that's at hand, we won't slip up emotionally. Amen? Because we'll already have peace within us. We're already... Be prepared to be righteous. We we'll already have a shield to thwart off the negative thoughts that always seem to come. Glory to God. The helmet of salvation. Amen? Our, our heads protected. Amen? With thoughts of good and not evil. Amen? Because sometimes you can get so caught up emotionally that you're wishing bad things on people. Hmm. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, sometimes we just need to, we just need to speak God's word. Amen? Sometimes we just need to speak God's word. Sometimes we just need to call out God's word. Amen? And say, the devil, devil, you are a liar, and you're the father of liars, and the truth isn't in you. Hallelujah. I won't bow down to you. Amen. Get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. Sometimes we need to speak the word of God. 
to the situations that we're facing and pray as a defense. I tell you, it's easy. I used to say it's not easy, but it's easy. It is. It's easy for you to pray as a defense. If, if you already been in the spirit of prayer, it's easy for you to pray as a defense. But if you're not prayed up, I understand. See, because we already just got to reading First Peter, where it told you that the devil walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So if he devoured you, I understand that you weren't in the spirit. I understand. I ain't condemning you, but I understand. Amen? It's okay. But you have a chance to right that room. The next time, you can use prayer as a defense. Amen? If you're sober, alert. If you're vigilant on God. Amen? Yeah, I heard that noise. I ain't worried about you. <laughs> the Bible says, be not afraid of sudden fear. Amen? Glory to God. It's okay, Satan. <laughs> I know who you are. I can see you coming. Amen? But my God is with me. Amen? My God is with me. His wrath, his staff, and his rod, they comfort me. Yea, though I walk through the valley. Amen? I, I, I'm going to speak the word out. The, the minute I start to get scared, I'm going to encourage myself in the word. Amen? Because I know that's where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. So I have to speak the word to comfort me, to calm me. Amen? Glory to God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Sometimes you, you don't know what to say. Amen? Sometimes you just got to cry out, Jesus. Amen? God knows what that means. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord. Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Amen? Glory to God. Sometimes you just got to call out Jesus. The way to win this war we're in, the way to overcome this social distancing, the way to overthrow these problems we face is by going on the offense rather than playing defense. Back when I used to play basketball, I used to be at John Hope. They didn't like to pass the ball all the time. So they wanted to be ball hogs. Everybody wanted to score 20 points, 22 points and stuff, you know. Bunch of gunners, you know what I mean? I don't know if want to pass the ball. So I, I remember... They used to freeze me out. That's what they call it. Nah, don't give him the ball. Don't give him the ball. Nah, 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 nah. Shoot, shoot, shoot. So my coach told me, he said, don't even get mad at him, Lee. He said, use this opportunity to play defense to create your own offense. He said, they're going to miss. He said, when they miss, you grab that rebound and you go back up and get your points that way. I said, all right. That's how we're going to win this war here. Amen? We're going to go on the defensive, and we're going to pray. We're going to pray long, and we're going to pray hard. Because the Bible says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen? We're going to pray long, and we're going to pray hard. Because we know that prayer is going to change things. Amen? We're going to use prayer as a defense. Don't let the distractions of what's going through or what you're going through deter you from keeping away during this moment of social distancing. Use the tools that we're using right now. Amen? Prayer as a defense is not just a title in the Bible study. It should be a way of life. 
It'll keep you from getting too emotionally involved and keep you spiritually involved. Amen? We need to be more spiritually involved than we are emotionally involved. Amen? Knowing that prayer will change things. All this is a diversion to keep you from praying. But I told someone today, I said, um, matter of fact, it was last night. I had went out to go do a job for a guy. And uh, he's telling me how his mother was sick with cancer. And his brother wasn't, uh, his brother wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing to help out the situation. And uh, he said, yeah, I used to go to church. I used to go to Bible study and prayer meetings and, uh, you know, doing the fellowship and everything. He said, but when mom got sick, you know, I, I kind of, you know, had to take care of her. And I told him, I said, you know what I hear right now? I said, I hear blah, 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 blah. I said, no disrespect to your mother, but I hear you making excuses why you're not doing what you should be doing for her. No, no, not me. No, no, no. He said, no, no, no. My brother's not doing nothing. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going over there, man. I'm doing... I said, no. You're not praying for her. I said, if you really want to help, pray for her. I said, don't run from God. Run to God. I said, God will hear and answer your prayer. I said, you've already tasted and seen that God is good. Why not go to him? And he thought about it. He just shook his head and he didn't say nothing. And I thank God that I was bold enough to speak to him and encourage him about going back to church. See, we, we want to speak up. In for the emotions that we feel when people are being done wrong physically, but we're not willing to speak up when people are being done wrong spiritually. It's up to us to spread this gospel. Amen? We know what it says in Matthew. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son teaching them to observe all that I have commanded and law on which you always, even unto the end of the earth. It's up to us to speak to our brothers and sisters that are lost. Amen? We're not just going through a Black Lives Matter, but we're going through a spiritual matter. It's up to us to speak to the people, to encourage them to get back in their word, to encourage them to pray, to encourage them to fellowship. Amen? Because we're all, us, all of us, are going to give an account as to what we did in this walk. And we have no excuse now because we have Zoom meetings. We have computers now. We can talk to each other. Everybody can get down. Just like with this meeting right here. All they have to do is call in. We should use these platforms. I mentioned earlier, how has it affected you? And I thank God that now my family out of state, we're in touch with each other all the more now because everybody's had a chance to slow down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what the devil meant for evil, God is definitely getting the glory out of it. Amen? Because now we get a chance to send the text, to send the scriptures, because we're no longer busy. Amen? This wasn't a bad thing. This, this pandemic wasn't a bad thing. In many ways, it was good because it gave you a chance for self-introspection. Amen? It gave you a chance to see within you if you're still doing what's right, see if you're still in the faith, to see if you are afraid to speak as of the oracles of God. Amen? Prayer as a defense. We can use it. It'll work. 
Trust me, I know. I've done it. Amen? I've prayed and asked God to open up communication with people that swore they would never talk to me again. And he did it. It took years. I had a name in the name box for three years. <laughs> three years. See, God's never late. He's always on time. Amen? And we're talking now, smiling, hugging, loving on each other. Amen? Don't stop praying because prayer is our defense. Don't allow what, what's affecting you to affect you. We know what Jesus said about the thief. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And you know that God, which he said in Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? If we have any doubts that God is not in full control, remember this one thing in Psalm 62 and 11, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Amen? In closing, protesting is necessary and important. Very much so. Speaking out for unfairness, and equality is important, very much so. Coming, to, coming together as a group is important, very much so. All of that is great, but what moves the hand of God is prayer. For God hears and answers prayer. Prayer is our defense against all that is wrong in the world today. When we come together as a nation and pray, our voices will shake the very ground that we stand on. And just like the, wall, the walls of Jericho, when we pray in unison and with one loud voice, the walls of racism will fall. Amen. Glory to God, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God. Glory to God. Elder Maji? I think it's, it's Elder Fran. She's doing the emceeing. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. I didn't know if anyone was here, if there was anyone sitting with anyone. As far as an altar call, to always give it because you never know if somebody is joining somebody. Um, we see certain names of people that we know are members, but we never know if there's somebody else that's with them that we don't know. So if you want to give that altar call. Amen. 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 If there's anyone under the sound of my voice that does not know Jesus and a pardon of his sins, just like myself, I was caught up. Amen. And sometimes I know times get difficult and times get hard and times get rough. But there comes a point in time in your life where you get sick and tired of being sick and tired and you want real change. And if that's you and you want real change, amen, all you have to do is call out to God. He said, I stand at the door and I knock. Amen? If you knock, God will hear you. So all you have to do is repeat after me, say, Father God, I realize that I'm a sinner. I know that I've done wrong and I ask you to forgive me. Lord God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You said if I do that, that I'll be saved. So I thank you this day for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
We just thank and praise God for Deacon Lee and the word that uh, God used him today. Uh, I left, wrote some notes here, and of course, and then I messed up my... Uh, okay, praise God. He started off, praise the Lord, and stand still and know that I am God. Amen? Sometimes Amen. we have to stand still and know that God is God. And God, we are not God. The Holy Spirit will will uh, affect our uh, us, the spirit within us to stand still sometimes, be quiet sometimes, because God is moving, and God is moving right now. So praise the Lord. We thank and praise God for that. Um, use prayer as a defense, amen, mm -hmm. that we pray not only for the people that we're praying for, also so that we will have peace within our spirit on situations that we cannot handle, situations that we cannot change, but we are affected by it. Praise the Lord. So as Christians, we need to have the spirit of God still within us to have the characteristics of God. Praise God, the spirit of God within us, the fruit of the spirit within us. And we need that joy. We need that peace, that temperance, that patience. We need to have all that so that things that are happening in the world do not disturb our spirit to a point that we're going wacky out of our mind. Uh, locking ourselves in a our house, amen, afraid to go outside, afraid to talk to anyone, praise the Lord, this is what the pandemic can do. Um, some people have been in the house for a while and afraid to go out of the house at this point, praise the Lord. Um, we've got to get to ourselves to a point that we're going to trust God and we're going to move forward, amen. The pandemic may be with us for years. You can't shelter yourself and stay within the house forever, amen. We have to walk by faith. So there comes a time that you have to pray and move forward. Amen. God is our refuge, our ever-present help. He is our refuge. Again, it's calling on the Lord. He is the one who keeps us. He is the one who leads and guides us. Praise God. We're not blind. We know all that is going on within the world, but it is he who is our refuge. He is the one that keeps us. We are children of the most high God. We are special. We're unique. We're set apart. We're peculiar. Yes. We are affected. We do pray, pray as our defense and pray for our sisters and brothers that are out there. But most of the times that I pray for people, I pray for salvation. I pray that when I know that I'm praying for salvation, that they are going to come to know the Lord, then I don't worry about them so much. If I know that they're hearing the word of God, I move on to the next one. Amen. And praying for those to, that they would come to know the Lord in the pardon of their sins. Because at the end of the day, that's what's most important in their lives. Amen. That they come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So even as I pray for somebody who may be sick or somebody may be going through or disturbed, praise the Lord. I pray for their salvation most, mostly. Save them for us, Lord. Sanctify them. Save them for us. Amen. Glory be to God. Keep your emotions in check. Amen. And power belongs to God. These are the things that I wrote down in my notes here. So I just want to thank and praise God for Deacon Lee. We're using Deacon Lee. Amen. Bring forth the word. Um, praise God. Uh, we have a Sister Maji doing the offering. Sister Maji, you there? I am here. My, my brother Prince is, is, did he escape with Sister Camille? Oh, this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am here. This is the time of your giving. Um, obviously, we're here right this at this moment, but we encourage you. Um, God loves a cheerful giver. And Great. so you guys know there's um, several ways, um, four ways you can give. Um, you can go online to gtomi.org and give online and just give from your heart. You can do um, download to your uh, phone, free Tively. Uh, T I T H E dot L Y mobile given app. Let me try you that. Download right that. Um, you can text 844 615 0527 and write in here. Number. And then, of course, you can mail uh, an envelope to give. So we encourage you to give. God loves a cheerful giver. This is your church. We praise God for you. We thank you for your continuing to give in your love. I don't know what that is. For the body of Christ and to the work of the kingdom. That you're reading oh, okay. Elder Fran. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, oh, oh, I'm sorry, so sis. I, I'm, I'm showing uh, Vanessa. Mute I'm yourself, here. then. Mute yourself, Mike. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, honey. I love you. Yeah, I was trying to. She, she was going. Anyway, got, praise God. All about the giving. Praise the Lord. I'm so make sure apologize to Samaji. All right. Were you done? I, I, I believe I am. Did everybody get the message? <laughs> Praise God. 
Come doing on. Two, two or three things over here that we're doing over here. Praise God. So did anyone have any questions about anything before I went into our announcements? You have to unmute yourself if that's the case. So are all minds satisfied? Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm going to move on to the announcements. Praise God. Um, 